beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy any time we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy any time we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to that. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so on you and you here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son. stay blessed the Bible lets us know that there are dimensions and planes of reality. For instance, there is the physical realm where we can touch, we can interact with things, matter as we know. But the Bible and even science tells us that there are other realms and other dimensions and planes of living that may be beyond our scientific scope. Now, most believers either have not intentionally studied and believed the reality of these planes and these realms. Um, sadly, not, not, to, not to glorify Satan, but people who have passed through all kinds of occultic practices would tell you that whilst they were involved in some of these things, they were exposed to realms and dimensions and planes of reality that were above and beyond this natural plane so the first thing we have to learn this morning is that the physical realm is not the only realm available the physical realm is not the only realm available the very design of man the very design of man attests to the fact that the physical realm is not the only realm available the bible says that when God made man, he first made spirit, man came out of God. Is that true? And then the Bible says, God molded Adam, dark earth, and he breathed into that dark earth, and man became a living soul. So man was built with an advantage to be able to interact with both realms, that man is able to concurrently interact with the realm of the spirit, and to interact with the physical realm. If you're together, please say amen. amen. In Colossians chapter 1 and verse 16. Colossians 1 and verse 16. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 16. It says, For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible. So there are invisible things that were created. The fact that it is invisible does not mean it is unreal. It just means that it is beyond the realm and the grasp of the optical eyes. It says visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. That means there are many things that have been created that from a scientific standpoint we have not interacted with yet. Are we together now? This is very important. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 18, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 18, Paul is still speaking. 
2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 18. Please let's read together. Ready? One to read. While we look not at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. Hold on. The second information the Bible tells us is that there is a possibility to look at the things that are unseen. It says, while we look not at the things which are seen, but the things which are unseen, under a certain condition you can look at the things that are unseen. Are we together? And then he tells us that anything you can see without any effort is temporal. But the things which are not seen are eternal. It is possible to look at things unseen. In Second Kings chapter 6, very popular scripture, we'll just read three of the portion, Second Kings 6 from verse 16. This was Elisha and his servant when they were surrounded by the armies and he was afraid. And the Bible says, and he, the evening Elisha, answered and said, fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. 17. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes. Question, was he blind? So what kind of opening was he talking about? That means there is another opening that is beyond this opening you have. Are we together now? He was talking to someone who had physical sight. But he said you only have sight within the scope of one realm. When it has to do with a higher dimension, you may not be able to see. So open his eyes. And the Lord opened his eyes. So God himself was attesting to the fact that this man, based on a certain plane of reality, he was blind. Open the eyes of the young man and the Bible says, and he saw. What did he now see that he did not see before? Because the Bible does not record the man being physically blind. And yet the Bible says his eyes were opened again and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses. <sighs> you mean he had never seen physical horses? What kind of horses were these ones that you cannot see with the first kind of vision? Horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. Please pay attention. Now he's seen another reality. Until that time, if you ask the man, document everything you can see. He would have written trees, horses, and if you told him there is more, he would say, I cannot. The same way you look at your bank account, the same way you look at the reports around you, and based on your optical eyes, you can write and document certain things, and when you bring it before the Lord, he says, that is not true. There is another opening that needs to happen to you. The fear of this man was based on the limitation of his sight. The fear was not based on the strength of the enemy. The strength was based on the limitation of his sight. When that other dimension of opening happened, the subject of fear died immediately. Could it be, could it be that... The reason why you may have been afraid and uncomfortable about tomorrow and your next level is because you have not received this miracle of the opening of your eyes. Are we together? So there is a realm of reality beyond the physical realm. This is true. That all that we see is not all that there is. All that we see is not all that we need. There are many tools that we need to establish our victories in Christ that are beyond the scientific realm. Now this is why the Bible says the natural man does not understand the things of the spirit. Why? Because they are spiritually discerned. He will need to tap into a frequency higher than the scientific realm. Write this down, please. The supernatural 
is an interplay between the word of God and the spirit of God. The supernatural is an interplay between the word of God and the spirit of God. The supernatural is an interplay between the word of God and the spirit of God. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1, it says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And then the Bible says, verse 2, it says, Now the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the Spirit of God. So we see the Spirit of God moving upon the face of the waters. And then verse 3, we now see the word of God. Let there be light. And the Bible says there was light. I hope you know that this light was not sunlight. No, this was not sunlight. This was the life-giving component of creation. This light that becomes the life of men, you see. Sunlight was created, I think they fall also. So this was, he was not talking of sunlight. The supernatural is an interplay between the word of God and the spirit of God. Why do we need to understand the supernatural? Please look up. If you do not understand the supernatural, you will not be able to transport to your realms the tools that are needed for you to walk in victory. In fact, the Bible says the weapons of our warfare. He already gives you an information. Don't look for them in this realm. You will not find them here. He stored them in a realm where thieves cannot access. He stored them in a realm where the manipulations of a government cannot access. He stored them in a realm where political manipulations cannot access. He stored them in the realm of the spirit. And he says, whenever you need them, do not search for them physically. They are not carnal. He says they are mighty through God. You would need to pull them from another dimension. Are we together? Many believers desire to walk in power. Many believers desire to make progress with their lives. But many times we limit our spiritual progress by focusing only on the physical realm. Focusing only um on science and logic and all of these things so when we are confronted with issues that require outsourcing intelligence beyond this realm we become stranded are we together now man was given an advantage of duality of realms that means i can be in this realm physically but then i can outsource intelligence from another dimension this is very powerful very very powerful that all that you see is not all that there is. Medically speaking, when an individual is diagnosed with a situation, please look up. We try using medical tools and if that man is limited as far as the limitation of medicine is concerned, we conclude that there is no solution for that man. But the Bible lets us know that the physical realm is not the only realm where we can draw strength. There is another dimension, my goodness, that you can outsource spiritual power from another realm and administer it physically and the results will show physically. Now watch this. If my body begins to swell, for instance, the question is, you are not surprised that my body is swelling because that is a supernatural occurrence too. I was not born that way. I was not surgically manipulated to begin to swell. But when the body goes down supernaturally, now becomes a problem. You see the mind of men. Are we together now? Yes. If I suddenly begin to develop a growth that I was not born with, Nobody begins to ask where does that growth derive its strength from. Because it's not growing at the rate of other cells in the body. That means another kind of life is empowering it. We can give it all kinds of medical explanations. But the truth is that if it was being empowered by the same energy, it will grow at the same rate with other cells. The fact that the growth accelerated to destroy you, it already tells you there is another kind of life empowering it but if that growth should shrink or disappear 
Now there is a problem. Where did it go to? The question is, where did it come from? Are we together? The supernatural. Very, very powerful. Until believers come to a point where they understand and appreciate the supernatural beyond being a Pentecostal phenomenon, beyond a phenomenon just for charismatics, we may never walk in certain levels of authority, power, and victory. For many people, they think the supernatural is just an option for those who are called into the apostolic and the prophetic ministry. So, if you feel you are not called into ministry, you just feel, let me remain at the level of principles and logic and human wisdom. The supernatural is not for men of God. The supernatural is not for charismatics and Pentecostals. The supernatural is not for preachers. The supernatural is a system of advantage provided for man so that we can walk experientially in victory jesus looks at nathaniel and says i saw you that means this is not the only eyes i have while you were under the tree i saw you in fact he scanned him and said an israelite indeed in whom there is no guile and nathaniel said this is surprising you are here and he said nathaniel just because i gave you this tip of the iceberg you are already surprised you will even see yourself greater things than this more than what you are seeing you will see the heavens open and the angels ascending and descending upon the son of man when you go to bed isn't it amazing that while your body is lying down there that same body is somewhere in the name of a mystery that you call a dream you are there with your body you are interacting with intelligence participating and you bring back information and yet your body is lying down there There are people who, do you know, science right now has been exploring deeper and deeper into this, this mysterious realm of the supernatural. In fact, I watched a documentary, I think a few months ago, where they tried to develop a machine that can record dreams. Yes. And I think they've, they've made some advances in it. So, the, the machine is connected to an individual whilst he's sleeping and it begins to give a pictorial representation of the dream that person is having. The realm of the spirit. When Jesus walked upon the earth, he demonstrated the reality and the supremacy of the realm of the spirit. Jesus, for instance, when the young lad brought five loaves and two fish, he looked at them and he taught them a lesson that all you have in your hands is not all there is. If you can tap into this realm, many things can happen to what you already have. Listen, this is very powerful because when you are aware of the fact that you are not limited just by this realm, there is an advantage that you have, the duality of realms. Are we blessed? Right from childhood, I've been very intrigued about issues of the supernatural, magic, and all of these things. Even before I had an intentional encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. It bothered me how people could manipulate laws. And sometimes you would watch these people in shows bring out doves from their pockets. Is that true? Some of them, and then now... Fortunately, God planted me to come from Africa. Hello, Africa. We saw traditional festivals where people would put fire through their mouth and bring it out laughing, cut themselves with knife, with no injuries whatsoever. These people fraternize with spirits who introduce them to certain spiritual laws that expose them to the realm of the spirit and on the strength of that view they could command signs supposedly and wonders on earth the holy spirit is not the only spirit who can introduce men to the supernatural the holy spirit is not the only spirit who can introduce men 
to the realm of the supernatural. In fact, any spirit at all, including demonic spirits, can usher men into certain dimensions of the supernatural. The Holy Spirit is the only spirit who can usher men into the supernatural in a way that edifies them and glorifies Jesus. The Holy Spirit is the only spirit who can usher men into the realm of the supernatural in a way and a manner that edifies the people and glorifies them. Every other spirit that exposes a man to the realm of the spirit will always leave a side effect in that man. Are we together now? But the Holy Spirit is not the only spirit that can expose men to the supernatural. For instance, when Moses came from his encounter with the God of the Hebrews, the Bible says he went to Pharaoh and said, Pharaoh, thus saith the Lord God of the Hebrews, let my people go. And he drew his rod. The Bible says the rod of Moses became a serpent. And you would think Pharaoh would look and say, wow, impressive. How did you make this happen? Pharaoh was not moved at all. He called Janus and Jembes, the magic sons of Egypt, and said, cast your rod also. And they casted their rods. It became the exact same thing. By what spirit then did their rod become a serpent? Hallelujah. That is why I must balance this very quickly. That in your desperation to know more of God, in your desperation to open up yourself to the realm of the Spirit, you must be sure that the Word of God and the Spirit of God become your principal guides. Because they are not the only guides available. Your passion and your desperation can connect you to other guides and other spirits that are not of God. They will usher you to the realm of the spirit and you will bring back error, you will bring back destruction. They will aberrate your spiritual progress. Many people have gone to fast and pray, wanting power, wanting to be open to the prophetic. And from the sincerity of their desperation, because they did not honor the word of God and the spirit, Spirit of God as the principal tools for exposing a man to the realm of the spirit in a way that edifies that individual and brings glory to God. Many of them had all kinds of interactions with pseudo Jesuses, they had all kinds of interactions with spirits of the dead, they had all kinds of interactions with the inter intergalactic realm, and they brought back messages, strategies, formulas that are now destroying the body of Christ. Can I tell you, I searched, I think a few days ago, to find out how many religions in the, are in the world. Let me give you that for free. There are over 4,000 religions in the world. How many? And counting. 4,000 registered religions in the world and counting. Every one of those 4,000 religions came from an encounter. And I can tell you, if there was no one following them, they would not have the audacity to even register it. Every one of them has a proposition that is directed to the realm of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not the only guide and usher to give you spiritual experiences. You have to understand this. Because we are a people of prayer. And right now... Um, spiritual activities like prayer and fasting and so on and so forth are really being emphasized in the body of Christ. Now people are having a heightened awareness of the value of these spiritual experiences. But we need to be careful because Satan also wants that kind of condition. The moment your hunger and your desperation rises to its zenith and you are not conscious of the Holy Spirit and the Word of God, eventually you will arrive at the realm of the Spirit and you will be escorted by strange and familiar spirits into error that will make for doom and destruction. A few years ago in Zari, I think I've shared this story somewhere. I finished a meeting and then just to see a few people to counsel them. And then I'm seeing these three or four gentlemen. And one of them had this beautiful priestly regalia. And I was wondering, wow, what a gentleman. This guy really wants to be a Nazarene. I thought it was just his passion to be like Jesus. 
Only for me to find out that that gentleman believed he was Jesus. Not like Jesus. Not in the image of Jesus. Jesus. They came from Kano. And the other gentleman who was with him was, I, I, I think, was it Judas now or John? One of these guys. No, 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 no. I'm not joking. I really mean what I'm saying. They really believed it. And for some reason, they believed that like Jesus received that impartation from John, they left Cano and they came to me for that, that semblance of the baptism. I was watching with shock. Now, I've seen all kinds of things in ministry, believe me. I've seen all kinds of things. But this one was unique and strange and interesting. That a human being can actually come to that point. Do you know, when I researched, those guys started as a prayer group. They didn't start as people who were bad people. They were sincere gentlemen who felt like they wanted to press into spiritual things. Welcome to the realm of the spirit unassisted by the Holy Ghost. And you find out that another spirit will drive you into all kinds of things and will ship back doctrines of demons, will ship back all kinds of things that destroy people. People have written books out of false encounters. People have deceived. Now the body of Christ is practically confused. We do not even know. Many believers don't know whether they are saved or not again. Because of the many extra biblical encounters that have come. And it does not mean that the people who had these encounters were necessarily bad. They have not been taught the protocol of accessing the supernatural. There are all kinds of combinations of trado african religion together with spiritism and then you find scriptures in psalms to back it up and that becomes a terrible combination like a bad cook and you create something that destroys people there is a reason why i'm teaching you on the supernatural this morning number one because it is god's desire that we access these realms if we must walk in victory we cannot shy away from the reality of this realm. But number two, to provide for us a roadmap by the Spirit. So that we do not delve into all kinds of error and superstition that would destroy us and destroy our lives. Let me finish my story. I honestly cannot even remember how I finished with those gentlemen. Because I think that guy was determined to remain Jesus. I think I remember trying to propose and advise him and to let him know that our dominion in this kingdom is not absolute dominion. It is shared dominion. The life of God that we have was not derived from us. It came from Jesus to us by connection. And yet they would not believe. I know a gentleman many years ago again who really began praying and pressing into spiritual things until he eventually became it was a mental condition i think it resulted to something like bipolar that gentleman was in the hospital for a very long time in fact he stayed in my house i brought him then at that time to stay in my house for a day or two hoping that the presence of god in that house will help rehabilitate whatever was happening to him and I woke up in the night and I saw the gentleman carrying a handkerchief, looking for my mirrors. I said, you are leaving the next day. By the morning, you are out of my house. I've made my spiritual contribution. God knows I love you. Are we together? Many people have routed the realm of the spirit in unauthorized ways. I hope you know that there are many ways to enter a house. For instance, you can tear the roof and come in. You are in the house, but you are in the house illegally. You can jump through the fence. You can squeeze through the window. But the authorized way to enter the house is through the door. Jesus and Jesus alone said, I am. That means I am the authorized access, the way, the door. You can follow through any other route. If you enter my house through my window, you are in my house, but you are not welcome. Are we together? This is not to plant fear in you. 
We are discussing the subject of encounters. And we have to be careful. The supernatural is a realm that is available for all. The supernatural is a realm that we should all get to. That means you should get to a point in your life where you can manifest the gifts of the Spirit. You should get to a point in your life where your eyes are open to encounter and have visionary experiences. All of these systems of advantage, as I call them, they are important for the excelling of the believer. But if you are not guided, the devil will deceive us and manipulate our sincere desire into realms and encounters and activities that will destroy us. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. So the supernatural is an interplay between the word of God and the spirit of God. Let me talk for a minute or two about the word of God. Please look up. When you are dealing with the subject of the supernatural, there is something about God you have to know and understand. That the boundary of God's commitment to the believer is his word. The word of God represents the jurisdiction of God's commitment to the believer. God cannot be committed to the believer outside of the provision that the word allows. You have to understand this. He has limited his interaction with man to the provisions that scripture allows. That means if you cannot find the basis for that interaction from scripture, God is not committed to it. Are we together now? This is, this is a rule of thumb that you have to understand in your desire to explore the realm of the spirit. That the boundary of God's commitment to man is his word. That means there is nothing God will ever do with man, do for man, do to man, that will be outside the provisions that his word allows. In fact, the Bible says that he has exalted his word above his reputation. So, there is no other way an individual will be saved in this kingdom because according to scripture the formula for administering salvation is that with your heart you believe unto righteousness is that true and that with your mouth confession is made unto salvation so if anyone ever tells you he or she was saved you have a right to ask them how did you get saved verify the formula if it's not consistent with scripture no matter what kind of peace he has he's not saved based on scripture our confidence must come or be derived from the provisions that the scripture allows. The Bible says in obtaining promises, if it is God's way, there are two things that must be added to your equation. Faith and patience. It says to follow them who through faith and patience. If you ever meet a man who obtained a promise in the kingdom and you do not find the application of faith and you do not find patience, he says run away. Even if there is a promise, he's holding. So there is faith and patience. Are we together now? When you understand the administration of the word of God, then it is going to be difficult for you to delve into error. I give you an instance. If God opens my eyes right now and say, I see a dear sister here and I see a spirit standing behind her or I see a grave. Now I'm interpreting how spiritual things happen. Now I'm seeing all these kinds of things because the way the realm of the spirit works is very different from the way this realm works. The concept of time and distance in the realm of the spirit is not exactly the way it works here. In one minute, I can see something that would take me ten minutes to interpret. Are we together now? Yes. The, the, the capacity to assimilate is higher in the realm of the spirit than this realm. We can be praying right now and I can say in Jesus' name. And I'll be sharing something that I just saw and it will take over five, ten minutes. The realm of the spirit is by far superior to this realm. When the hand wrote on the wall in the days of Daniel, it was only four words from the physical realm. Mene, Mene, Tekel, Ufesen. But Mene alone meant, O oh king, you have been weighed in a balance and you have been found wanting. <laughs> so imagine what happens when you pray in tongues. 
that 10 minutes of praying in tongues, you are not just saying ba 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 ba. Your mind thinks that's what you are saying. But in the realm of the spirit, you are stretching and you are creating realities and interacting with the realm of the spirit. Are we blessed now? I hope someone is learning something. So, back to my vision. I'm seeing this lady, for instance, and I'm seeing a grave and I'm seeing destruction. Now, I can interpret everything based on what I saw. And I say, young lady, stand up. Then I will tell her that I just saw a grave. I just saw a spirit behind you. And I can leave that lady in that state and destroy her faith dampen her confidence about God and allow the devil to now take advantage of her imagination and manifest what I saw. Or I can interpret what I have seen from the lens of scripture. Now I have seen the grave. The grave has never been, except for the situation of Jesus, the grave has never really been a place of advantage. It's a representation of death and doom and destruction. Is that true? So when I see a grave and I see a spirit, I must be able to pass my vision through the lens of scripture to profit that lady. The interpretation must be constructed in a way and a manner that regardless what I saw, victory is what she must hear. Are you getting what I'm saying now? My seeing may be correct, but because I do not know that the word of God is more superior. Listen, the dominion of the word of God is not only in this physical realm. Even if you take the word of God to the realm of the spirit, every spirit will submit to it also. If God, the spirit, submits to the word of God, there is no other spirit that stands higher than the word of God. The word of God still commands authority and dominion, even in the realm of the spirit. Are we together? So if I see you dead in the realm of the spirit, I'm not just going to stand and say, I see you dead. There are many scriptures that will support my interpretation. Number one, I will discern your level of maturity. Are you matured enough for me to give you that vision without it affecting your confidence? If I discern you are immature, I will leave it and pray about it. I will just minister life to you and not have to tell you the vision. Because receiving that vision when you are not grounded, even if I pray for you, the, the level of, of the low level of transformation will still make you a victim of what I've said. Is God teaching someone something this morning? There have been many times when I'm about to take a trip and then I get text messages from people and many genuine, sincere people, some of them prophets, and they say, Apostle, you are about to take a trip. And I say, that's exactly true. I say, be careful. Please don't go. I'm seeing a ghastly motor accident. And they are not lying. That was what Satan planned that morning when I woke up. But I have to get there because... I'm aware that Satan does not have any special occasion to kill me. The Bible already gives me an information that any day and any time he finds a chance. He is an enemy. There is no rest as far as that agenda is concerned. So that news of, of tragedy based on my transformation is not news. I have always known he does not like me. There is nothing new about it. Now listen, I do not dishonor the vision that that man saw. But then my confidence is based on the fact that I have the principles of scripture that can veto that spiritual activity. And I go on my journey and return back safely. Just on hearing that vision, at least three scriptures come as weapons. One, I shall not die, but live and declare. You don't just make bold face for nothing. There has to be a scriptural basis. Number two, honor your father and your mother in the Lord. Go and ask my parents. Go and ask every spiritual leader in this nation whether I have dishonored them. So what becomes the basis? Where is the hedge broken that the serpent will strike? And then number three, I said before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Choose life. 
that becomes the basis of my confidence. If all I say is, God forbid, I won't die. You would die like you, are, you cannot imagine. It has to be the scripture. That the scripture has authority even in the realm of the spirit. I don't need to know what spirit was assigned. I just need to know that every spirit must submit to scripture. I pray you understand what I'm teaching this morning. Let me teach you within the few minutes we have left how to correctly access the supernatural. We'll have some time this evening to pray for the sick and to minister. So do well to invite as many people who are trusting the Lord who we'll have some time to minister. I think you should clap with your pastor too. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes. It will be, it will be a time of activations there are many of us who the lord sent you to this conference to come and to receive not just to be enlightened but to encounter graces graces that will lift you and open up new doors and new dimensions for you if you're with me say amen, amen. there are many of you that tonight age-long captivities that have refused to bow to the name and the lordship of the christ by the administration of his power through his word in the name of Jesus, we will ward off these arsenals of darkness against your life. There are four keys that can help you manifest the supernatural. By manifesting the supernatural, I don't just mean visionary experiences, but walking practically in the supernatural. You want your life to command signs and wonders. You want your life to be a manifestation of the possibilities of the kingdom beyond the physical realm. Here are the keys. Number one, the first thing you need is knowledge. You need knowledge of the principles of scripture. You need to know the word of God. Knowledge of the principles of scripture. That means if you truly do not know the word, if you do not contend for enlightenment through the word, you may never be able to manifest the supernatural in a way that profits you, glorifies Jesus, and becomes a blessing to all who are connected to you. The word of God. The formula remains the same. In the beginning, God. John 1 verse 1 says, in the beginning was the word. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Verse 2 says, the same was in the beginning with God. Verse 3 says, all things, how many things? Does that include your finances, your lifting, your tomorrow, your exaltation, your restoration? All things were made by Him. And without Him, that means outside of the influence of the Word of God, was not anything made that was made. You must pay attention to scriptures. I commend you to God, He says, and to the Word of His grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. This is the Bible. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 16. It says that the word of Christ should dwell in you richly in all wisdom. In all wisdom. In all wisdom. In all wisdom. Not some wisdom. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. 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 You must allow the word of God to find expression within your spirit. You must become an addict of the word of God. If you truly want to walk in the supernatural... Before you start engaging in spiritual exercises, make sure you have the fortification of the word. Fasting for days, praying for days without a foundation of the word will only expose you to the realm of the spirit, but then it will expose you to familiar spirits. You must have that foundation of the word. We are born of the word. We live by the word. We reign by the word. Say amen. amen. You must have knowledge. 
I submit to you that there is a lot of spiritual ignorance in the body of Christ. Spiritual ignorance. I respectfully admit, and now I'm teaching apostolically, not just to house on the rock, but generally within the body of Christ, the truth is that there is a lot of Bible study. There is a lot of scripture recitation, but there is very little access to superior knowledge spiritual knowledge we reign in this kingdom on the strength of the high level illumination that we have you must contend for light john 1 5 and the light shineth in darkness and the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not you must become a student of scripture not for the purpose of preaching not for the purpose of having something to say but for your personal spiritual growth you are mature to the degree to which the word of christ abides in you john 15 the first eight, eight verses when you read from verse 1 down to verse 8 it talks of the abiding power of the word if you are abide in me and my word abides in you that you will ask whatever you will and it will be given to you you have to abide i believe the word of god i study the word of god i love the word of god it is my meditation all day long it has constructed my understanding are we together? One advantage of the word of God is that it constructs your viewpoint. You are able to interpret life from the lens of scripture. Make the word of God a priority in your life. And you have set yourself on a course for supernatural living. I guarantee you on this. The Bible contains the wisest perspective on all matters. The Bible, scripture contains the wisest perspective on all matters now in truth i will tell you you will find a lot of theological debates as to um the fact that there may be other books of the bible and it's not only 66 books i agree i agree based on theology but the bible lets us know that this that has been canonized is sufficient to communicate the whole counsel of God. As far as the excelling of the believer is concerned. There is nothing that you will ever encounter in your life that does not have a solution based on scripture. So the information here is sufficient enough. It says many miracles Jesus did which are not recorded in this book. So it tells you there are others that are not recorded. It said, but this has been recorded that you will believe. And that in believing you will find life. The truths here are sufficient to administer life and victory as far as the course of your lifetime is concerned. Are we blessed? Knowledge. The knowledge of scripture. And let me tell you this. The seed for the harvest of knowledge is to be able to set yourself, to give yourself to study, and to give yourself to learning. The Bible says, study to show yourself approved. A workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Preachers, we must study. Believers, we must study. I am in a hurry would destroy our lives. I am in a hurry would destroy our lives. They are life to those who find them. They are more than information to those who find them. They are life. The Bible is not a lecture manual. It contains the character of God. It is a revelation of God's ways. His modus operandi. When you understand scripture, you are enlightened. Dominion, the word exousia that is translated authority. It means delegated power that is based on light. The power to stand and represent another based on that information that that one had. That means if I send someone to stand for me, I would not just say delegate for me until I tell him what I know. Are we together now? That sharing together. So you come to a point of illumination. Number two, very quickly. The second key that activates the supernatural. Are we ready? Yes. The second key is faith. You must have faith in God. You must have the faith of God. Mark 11. 
we'll start reading from verse 22 mark 11 this is jesus about to teach us his classic on faith jesus said unto them have faith in god for many of you who are familiar with the writings of men like papa Hagen, they would interpret this as have the faith of god next verse he says this is how the character of faith in god or the faith of god works whatsoever thou shalt say so in faith there is a saying be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart so the heart is part of the equation for faith and shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass the bible says he shall have whatsoever he saith the general rule is in verse 24 verse 24 therefore i say unto you what things soever ye desire when ye pray so we see that prayer is part of the faith equation believe that thou receivest them and thou shall have them you cannot manifest the supernatural if there is no faith what is faith your conviction faith is beyond believing the word believing comes from the Greek word pistis. It means conviction. But it does not stay with conviction. You can believe and yet you have not manifested faith. Faith is the name given to the action that you take based on your conviction on who God is and the integrity of his word. There has to be action for it to be called faith. And the action will be in accordance to the conditions he's created. You don't just act at random. Every promise in scripture has a a predefined condition attached to it if you want to prosper in the kingdom you want supernatural prosperity and the blessings of god it is your responsibility to find out the principles that connect to that possibility there is he that scattereth the bible says and yet increase it there is he that withholded more than is meat and tends to poverty the diligent hand shall be made fat so these are all the tools that make for prosperity in the kingdom there is a place for diligence there is a place for favor there is a place for the anointing there is a place for sowing and all of these things put together when you know them and you act upon them you put pressure on god's integrity and then you begin to see a manifestation of the same most believers believe but they do not have faith if i ask you for instance to come up here and you keep speaking and say i am coming in the name of jesus i am coming in fact i'm running i'm in a hurry i'm coming you heard me and you are communicating with me but you have not come so many people just continue to confess and there is a place for that it's from the word homologio it means repeat as you heard to confess means to to echo it again as stated by the word but it does not mean that you just confess over everything and sit down. There are things that you need to stand up and move. You need to act. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord, to do and observe all that I command you this day. It says that you shall be exalted above the nations of the earth, and this blessing shall come upon you and overtake you you must be careful to do not just to learn faith is not just saying what god has said faith is doing what god has said the power is in the doing are we together now when he commanded the ten lepers go and show yourself to the priest he said the bible says as they went not as they wished not as they were deciding it was as they went turning water to wine john 2 it says fetch and go and serve the bible says as they were going that risk was what turned the water to wine can i tell you the truth if you will ever raise a dead body you must have the faith to stand before one if you cannot have the courage to stand before a dead body forget about resurrection and i can tell you firsthand in my life I've stood in front of a few dead bodies. Usually when people die, people are quick to call me and, you know, try to pray for their resurrection first before eventually they give up. So I get this quite honestly, maybe at least once every week. Someone has died, apostle, we believe something can happen. And I agree, I've used it to exercise my faith. Uh, I don't know if I've shared it here. The first time, it was the anatomy lab 
of Abu Zaria. You know, they have a mortuary there. Someone died and they took me there and closed the door. Yes, sir. I saw dead bodies and I was wondering, now, which one am I going to pray for? Faith. That's right. Faith. I laid my hands on that dead body and it was as if I was touching a stone. I'd been embalmed. In the name of Jesus, come back to life. In the name of Jesus, come back to life. I said everything, quoted everything, declared. Remember, try to remember how Jesus raised the, the son of the, the widow had named Lazarus. All these people, nothing worked. Do you know, to be honest with you, at the point I stood there and I told them, I said, you people should open the door for me. The next time would be the mortuary of the teaching hospital. Now they locked me there because usually they don't allow that. So they smuggled me in and closed the door. So many dead bodies, some lying on that. And I was watching you. Ah! I was afraid until fear. Do you know, let me tell you. One of the ways that God takes away fear. Look up please. Let me teach you something. One of the ways that God takes away fear is to bring you face to face with what you are afraid of. You will stay with it so long you will stop being afraid of it. I prayed and prayed and nothing happened and I just used the opportunity to think about my life. At least let me not waste that moment before they open the door. Everyone here was once alive. Oh God. Teach me to number my days that I may apply my heart unto wisdom. How did I get here? I'm teaching about faith. <laughs> Hallelujah. You must manifest faith. Now, for a long time, I have a few more minutes. For a long time, there has been a debate, especially between the charismatics and you know, certain believers that we may call, respectfully speaking, maybe word of faith. It's been that there are people who choose, listen carefully, there are people who choose faith and there are people who choose the Holy Ghost. Are we together? The Pentecostals and the Charismatics, generally. So, the word of faith people, for instance, now this is not, we are all word of faith, you understand what I'm saying. There are people who just believe that all it takes is just your faith. Leave the Holy Ghost. Once you have faith, let He can go places. And there are those who believe, forget about faith. Faith is nonsense. Once you have the Holy Ghost, just move. The Bible has never dichotomized faith and the Holy Ghost. Let me explain to you the ministry of faith and the Holy Ghost. Please look up. I'm holding here a bottle of water. The bottle is faith. The Holy Ghost is akin to the water. Are we together now? The power of the Holy Ghost has to flow through that funnel called your faith. So the assignment, listen to me, faith has no power in itself. Faith is just a system of connection. You must believe faith but not idolize it. There is, there is no dogma out of faith. Faith is simply a system of connection. Faith connects you, your situation, to the power of God. But the agency that really brings the result is not faith. It is the power of God. It is His divine power that gives us all things. But when we say it happened to your faith, you are right because it was your faith that connected you. Are we together now? Yes. Can I, can I use one example with money? Will you be sad if I bring out money? Praise God. Because there are people who are not in the mood for this kind of joke. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. Now, watch this. This is a hundred dollar bill. Are we together? If I want a bottle of water, watch this. And this is a hundred dollars. This hundred dollar bill connects me to the possibility of taking this water. Is that true? So, if you ask me, how are you going to get this water? I will lift this and tell you this is the assurance I have that I can get the water. But what do I really need? Which of them do I need? 
Which one brings the satisfaction? Which one brings the nourishment? It is not the money. But without this, I cannot access this. That is the union between the faith and the power of God. Faith and the power of God. Don't dichotomize it. No. It takes faith to access the power of God. It takes the power of God to provide solutions. Faith does not provide solutions. Faith is like currency. Currency can feed you. You are right. But currency is not food. Are you getting this example now? Yes. So, if I ask you, how do you think you'll be able to buy or pay for that house? You lift this. If I ask you, how did you purchase the house? You say, by God's grace, I had a hundred thousand or fifty million or whatever to buy the house. But it is, you are not going to live in the money, you will live in the house. This is how faith works. The assignment of faith comes to an end the moment the power of God is released. Are we together now? You have to learn this. This is what I want. The miracles, the breakthroughs, the increase, whatever it is. But this is what will bring it. Faith. So, I do not ignore this and start glorifying this while I'm dying of thirst. This comes so that I can use it to purchase this possibility. So when God wants me to have more of this, He gives me more of this. Are you seeing now? There is, there is, no, there is no fighting. When God wants me to always have this, He will make sure I always have this. But this is not really what satisfies me. This connects me to what provides solution for me. If you understand this, there will be no, there will be no confusion as to the ministry of faith and the ministry of the power of God. So when I say you need faith, it is true. Like you need currency. You don't go around the market or a mall strolling around and just desiring everything you want without the requisite level of finances to purchase that reality. Is that true? So when you build your faith, what are you doing? You are elongating and extending and strengthening your capacity to draw the power of God. It is true. So when he says, where is your faith? In other words, my power is available. But that container, that funnel to receive it. Remember that oil plus a small vessel does not equal profit. Profit is equal to oil plus a very large vessel. Large vessels. The problem was not lack of oil. It was that the capacity to carry the kind of oil that would bring that woman out of death was not there. So if I am building my faith, it's like creating more vessels. I'm not going to invent another oil. The oil can grow to match the size of that, that container. That's how faith works. So when you commit to building your faith, listen carefully, you are opening up yourself to more of the power of God, more of the activity of the supernatural. Are we together? I've even gone ahead of myself. Number three and the last key is the anointing. Second Peter chapter 1 from verse 3. In fact, let me give you one more before that. The power of words. Just back up a bit. The power of words. I omitted one point here. The power of words. You cannot truly access the supernatural in silence. The realm of the spirit is voice activated. You manifest the realm of the spirit through words. Words in prayer, words in word-based declarations. The realm of the spirit is activated through words. Everybody say words. The Bible says where the word of a king is, there is power. You want to walk in the supernatural? Words. That you now declare over people, for instance, be healed in the name of Jesus. And at the point where you are speaking, the power of God to bring that healing is now released. Are we together now? Every time Jesus needed to perform a miracle, almost every time, 
there was a place in the equation of that miracle where words came forth. Lazarus is dead, come forth. And he that was dead came forth. Words. That means if you want to walk in the realm of the spirit, there is no place for silence. You must learn to declare. Not declare your problems, not declare your pain, declare scripture and command the realm of the spirit by the authority given to you in and through Christ to respond to you accordingly. And I will not be silent. I will always worship you as long as I am breathing. I will. Please look up. The Bible lets us know that we live off two things. One, bread. Two, words. Jesus himself was teaching. And he says, the only way man lives is by bread and words. Bread and words. If you have bread alone, you will not live effectively. If you have words alone, you will not live effectively. You want to live effectively in this kingdom? You need bread for the physical realm. Words for the spirit realm. Bread and words. So as I eat, I speak. No wonder you is the same mouth that you need to access both of them. Both bread and words require the same channel to remind you that you need both to survive. Bread and words. So when I begin to declare over my life, the Lord is my light and my salvation. I begin to declare over my destiny. In the name of Jesus, my going out is blessed and my coming in is blessed. I decree and declare, the Gentiles come to my light and kings to the brightness of my rising. Nothing dies in my hands. I'm speaking with this understanding that words are powerful. They can create, they can adjust, they can manipulate things to be consistent with the will of the Father. Jesus is never called the prayer of God. Jesus is never called the fasting of God, but he is called the word of God. Are we together? When you pray, what makes prayer powerful is that it is a manifestation of words. Whether praying in the spirit or making prophetic decrees, petitions in the spirit. Listen to me. If you ignore the prayer ministry, you have ignored the opportunity to take advantage of words and create possibilities with them. Prayer is powerful. You want to access the realm of the spirit, you must obtain grace from God to pray. And please hear me in this conference, if there is anything attacking your prayer life, you must obtain grace this morning to fight it with a bulldog determination. Do not forbear with spiritual laxity. It will destroy you and give Satan access to rob you of an opportunity to live a supernatural life. Say amen, please. I believe in prayer. I truly believe in the ministry of prayer. But I believe in prayer with understanding. Not shadow boxing. I believe in prayer. The Bible calls certain kinds of prayers vain babblings. Jesus was giving warnings about prayer. And he says when you pray there is a protocol that you must follow. But hear me. He spake a parable to the end that men ought to pray. If you are an angel that's alright. If you are a spirit alone that's alright. But if you are a man. There is no record of God praying. He does not need to pray. But when God became a man, he prayed. And now that he's seated as a man, he's still praying. Even in heaven, Jesus is still praying. So all men must pray. You don't pray because you are on earth. You pray because you are a man. Because even in heaven, whoever is a man in heaven there must pray. 
Jesus the man, seated at the right hand of the Father, still makes intercession for the saints. Are we together? You must obtain grace to pray. Pray in the morning. Pray in the afternoon. Pray in the night. Pray when things are alright. Pray when things are not alright. Pray when you have breakthroughs. Pray when there are challenges. James 5.13 Is any of you afflicted? Let him pray. The biblical recommendation for afflictions of all sorts is to pray. Are we together? Let him pray. Pray in the spirit. Pray with understanding. Ladies and gentlemen, there is no other way. If we ignore the ministry of prayer, prayer in the spirit, prayer engaging scripture in strategic warfare prayers, there are gates and there are thrones, there are dominions mandated by darkness to stand and rob you from accessing your glorious destiny. Nothing will change by default. Time does not change things. Time only reveals. It does not change. You must engage the realm of the spirit in prayer. Unto thee that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Someone in one minute can you pray? pray and declare in the spirit and in understanding i decree and declare that i begin to walk in the supernatural you are declaring by the spirit of god everything around my life is supernatural supernatural finances supernatural ministry supernatural grace supernatural family supernatural advancement in the name of jesus i grow past the natural course of things supernatural living hallelujah let me give us the last key a quick recap number one the first key to accessing the supernatural and manifesting the same is knowledge of scripture the word of god number two faith faith in god number three the power of words Words that come in prayer. Listen carefully. God bless you. You can help me drop it in the offering envelope. Thank you. Words that come in prayer and word-based prophetic declarations. Lamentation is not prayer. Lamentation is just a human way to express pain. Ah, this is how my life is. You are not praying. No. No. Can I tell you this? God is touched with the feelings of our infirmity, but He only moves in response to His Word. God does not move in response to our feelings. God is touched with our feelings, but because He also submits to His Word, He will only respond at the instance of His Word. The last is the anointing. Mm. The anointing was given to us by God to help us manifest the supernatural. The power of God. 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 3. The Bible says, according as his divine power had given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us unto glory and virtue. Your breakthrough will be according as his divine power gives. Your lifting is according as his divine power gives. Listen to me. The divine power of God at work in a human vessel is what transforms you to a sign and a wonder. You are able to walk and manifest the supernatural when the anointing of the Holy Spirit rests upon your life. And believe me, I know what I am saying. Most people have downplayed the power of God because we have limited the operation of the power of God to just falling down and getting up. So, the moment you are able to have someone fall down and stand up, many times we convince ourselves that that is the limit to the operation of the power of God. The assignment of the power of God is to insist that everything in your life becomes consistent with the word of God. The assignment, listen to me, the power of God has the assignment to make the word of God look true in your life. 
That means if there is nothing to confirm, the anointing has no ministry. Please understand this. The power of God has no ministry until the word of God goes forth. The assignment of the power of God is to stop the word of God from looking like a lie in your life. So when God says, I am lifting you, he sends his power. The assignment of that power is to make sure by any means you do not remain at that position. Are we together now? Yes. So, if the president of a nation gives a decree and says there has to be sanitation or there is a lockdown for a day, the president does not go around ensuring that houses are locked and shops are locked. There is an agency mandated for that. But they go at the word of the president. The basis of their operation, the basis of their arrest, the basis for their release is the word of the president. So if he has not spoken, they cannot just come and hold you. So when you decree as the king that you are, in the name of Jesus, then the power of God is released to begin to produce the miracles and the signs and the wonders. If he says, I am blessed, the assignment of the word of God or the power of God is to insist that anything that looks like a curse, anything that defies the operation of the blessing, that it be judged by that power. Are we together now? This is, very, this is a, a powerful revelation. If God says, I am the head and not the tail, then there is a dimension of his power that is released over that statement. The power continues to trail and guide me. If anything appears in my life that can make me the tail, that becomes the assignment of the power of God. It stays there to deal with that situation until it brings me back as the head. If God declares upon your life that favor follows you, that anointing for favor will rest upon you like a mantle. And anybody who can bless you, that anointing will force them to not ignore you. The anointing has the assignment of insisting that they pay attention to you and attend to you until you match the level of the speaking of that favor. The four lepers, when a prophetic word came by this time tomorrow over Samaria, there were four lepers who were walking, but the power of God came to amplify their steps. And the enemies heard and they began to think that they had hired a few people to come and fight them and they ran away and left plenty there. That's the assignment of the power of God. And I know that someone who came for this conference, especially this morning, you are at a point in your life where there are many words over you, but it looks like there is no performance. You need to engage the power that makes that word come to pass. Otherwise, you will keep piling prophecies that will make God look like a liar. God is not a man that you should lie. Why is he not a man that you should lie? Listen to me. You, you may have heard it in my teachings. God became a man, but he is not a man. If God is a man, then he must worship who created him. He became a man. But he is not a man. Men lie. They don't lie because they are evil. They lie because they are men. But God is not a man that he should lie. Nor the son of man that he should repent. That means before God speaks, he will vet whether he has the power to back up what he is saying. Everything that he said here, he has vetted himself and found out that he has sufficient power to bring it to pass. So when God says, Joshua Selman, you will be lifted above the nations of the earth and these blessings will come upon you and overtake you. I believe him because the word is true, but I also believe him because there is a force behind that word that will insist that I do not remain small. On the strength of this, you can rise. This is why we have the audacity to come for a meeting like this and dare to say that your life will not be the same. This is why we can come for a meeting like this and dare to say that that situation that has scared you for a long time, that it can go. Imagine if it were just mere words. It would be dangerous to just give people mere words and information. Behind the things that we say, there is a throne, there is grace, and there is power that backs it. Blessed is she that believes, he says, for unto her there shall be a performance. 
Listen to me. If I take this water, I don't need to run to the lab and verify whether it is working correctly, whether it went to the right places. I trust the design and the wisdom and the intelligence of God. There is power that works there. Once it passes through my throat, I go and find rest. I do other things as proof that I know that God is intelligent enough. He's put this system. Imagine how long men live and yet they've never had to tear themselves open to verify whether digestion is happening correctly or not. And can I tell you this? He took responsibility for your trust in him. That's why he gave medicine and doctors. So that in case there is any malfunction, you have a right to outsource another drug and you can take it and by taking it, it corrects everything. And if it defies that drug, should he not be responsible enough to say, now that this is over, I created this to function this way. If drugs are limited, then I can outsource from another realm, beyond trees, beyond water, beyond injection, I can bring another reality to keep you in place. We are going to pray very briefly this morning. I want you, as you prepare to stand, to believe that things will definitely begin to change in your life. Because of the reality and the presence of the supernatural. The supernatural is an advantage that God gave the believer. That we can command signs, we can command wonders, we can make tremendous levels of advancement in our lives. If we move beyond the realm of science, beyond the realm of intellect. Can I tell you, there is a disclaimer though. If you intend to walk in the supernatural, then you must be ready to believe the things that science may not allow. You may be ready to believe certain things that do not make sense. Are we together now? It is not scientifically correct to dance and get breakthrough. Why will you dance your way to victory? It doesn't make sense scientifically. You work hard to get breakthrough. But there is a mystery. When you access the supernatural, you must be childlike enough to subscribe to the formula that makes you to receive supernatural results. Please rise up on your feet. From a human standpoint, you don't give to increase. No. You keep to increase. But in this kingdom, it says you give and then you increase. Medically speaking, you don't lay hands on a man and the man gets healed. You submit the man to a therapy, you administer drugs, but the Bible says they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. In one minute I'd like you to pray and ask the Lord to grant you grace that you desire to begin to walk and live in the supernatural. Please lift your voice and pray. You are a man of God here, pray. End time ministry requires the supernatural. You will never truly, truly, truly be able to command the kind of kingdom influence that you desire. Obtaining natural results. You are a businessman. It cannot be at the frequency of the natural. Lift your voice and pray. Please pray. Please pray. Just a few minutes this morning and we are done. Pray for the grace to build your faith. The grace to build your faith. The grace to build your faith. Your capacity to believe God. Your capacity to walk in keeping with spiritual principles. Declare over yourself the grace to pray. The grace to pray. The grace to pray. The grace to pray. Grace to pray. No spiritual laxity. The fire and the grace to pray. Hallelujah. 
please look up. The final prayer that I want you to pray is for the kind and the level of power that must come upon your life to turn you to another man. He says, I have found David my servant, and with my holy oil have I anointed him. It takes the power of the Holy Spirit to transform you from a natural individual to a supernatural individual. The results that you need to command have to be spiritual to bring glory to the name of the Lord. You are going to pray power from heaven. May fresh fire and fresh power come upon your life, come upon your business. Go ahead and pray. Please pray, let it be from the depth of your heart. Fresh power from heaven. The Bible says, as he came out of the water, which represents the word, the heavens were opened. And the Holy Ghost descended upon him. In the similitude of a dove. He was then driven to the wilderness. Fasted 40 days and 40 nights. And the Bible says. And he returned in the power of the spirit. Spiritual empowerment is a necessity. If we must walk in the supernatural. Say unto God. How terrible art thou in thy ways. Through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves to you. Ministry with power, business with power, career with power, family life with power, excelling in destiny with power. Someone is praying, no more ordinary living. No more ordinary business. Supernatural by the Spirit. The power of God has come to my life to give me an advantage. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please listen. Before I step down, I want to encourage you as much as possible. Please, I want you tonight to invite everyone you love and everyone you know for the service tonight because I believe with all my heart that one of the things that the Lord is going to be doing is that He will be granting us encounter with power, genuine power that produces results. Results that can be proven. Listen, if your life does not bear fruit and it does not command results, you will be frustrated. For a while you may ignore it as though it does not matter, but eventually the frustration will eat you up and it will not give you room to be fulfilled. It says, listen to me, herein is our Father glorified, when ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. So open your eyes. Open your ears And then you'll understand That the Lord is here Open your eyes Open your ears And then you'll understand That the Lord is here For this is holy what I want to do tonight. Open your eyes, open your ears, and then you'll understand that the Lord is That is what
messages and ministrations that come from this altar by the grace of God are sanctified true we are committed to teaching the uncompromising truth of God's word hallelujah but I want to teach a song hallelujah it's a very powerful song now the Bible says sing unto the Lord a new song hallelujah and Sometimes in our secret place, just worshiping Him, He gives us these songs, songs of the Spirit. They are not composed, they are received. Hallelujah. And these songs are very powerful because they open us up to the realities of the Spirit. And it's one thing to write a song, it's another thing to be permitted to release these songs and so tonight one of these songs will be let out I believe that it will edify us it's a very simple song hallelujah can you help me that you are playing the right thing it's not the slow Yahweh song but then it's, it's like it hallelujah okay can I have it fast your hands together permit me to be a music director for the next five minutes are you ready now very powerful, very simple song. I'll sing it and then um, allow me to sing it once. Okay, listen. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You are the king. There is no other. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Very simple song. I'll sing one more time. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You are the king. There is no other. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Or I don't have the large coin on your boy. Help me now. Yes, yes Lord. Lord. Yes, Lord. You are the king. There is no other. Yes, Lord. 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 Hold on. Yes, Lord. Come on, sing choir. Yes, Lord. You are the king. There is no other. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hold on. Let's sing 
one more time for perfection. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You are the King. There is no other. Yes, Lord. So powerful yes, song of worship. Lord.
We have Koinonia Mass Choir. Hallelujah. Thank you. You know, little things like this have a way of just taking away every fear and anxiety. Did you know that? The Bible says a merry heart doeth good like medicine. Sometimes we just become children in his presence and jump and sing. I know for some of you it's a bit embarrassing considering your status I apologize. But I realize that the greatest in the kingdom is the child. Yes, there is none other. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Help us in the name of Jesus. All right, very quickly, let's go to the word. Lord, we thank you. Let your word come with power. Let it come with grace. Let it come to change our hearts in the name of Jesus. I'm teaching on a very powerful subject very very powerful and critical um, the Bible makes us understand in Ephesians chapter 4 from verse 10 down to 12 hallelujah that when Jesus resurrected he gave gifts unto men some apostles and prophets and teachers and evangelists and pastors the Bible says for the edification the building the equipping the preparation to make ready hallelujah those who will do the work of the ministry so that we will come into the fullness of the stature of the person of Christ and that we be firm so that we are not tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine I'm going to be teaching a message I titled Firm Foundation we're going to be examining some powerful things today Firm Foundation very quickly Luke chapter 6 Luke chapter 6 oh yes there is no other there is no other there is no other truly there is no other Luke 6 verse Verse 46, Luke 6, 46, very quickly. And why call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? 47, whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings, and doeth them, I will show you whom he is like. 48, he is like a man who built an house, and dug deep, and laid the foundation. Take note laid the foundation on a rock and when take note not if when when a flood arose the stream beat vehemently upon that house and could not shake it for it was founded upon a rock but he that heareth and doeth not is like a man without a a man without a so it's possible for a man to be without a foundation like a man without a foundation was a consequence he built a house upon the earth against which the stream did beat vehemently and immediately it fell and the ruin of that house was great tonight the lord is going to be helping us to examine the foundations on which our faith is built upon hallelujah there are so many believers who we do not know what we believe in the kingdom there are many believers who do not know what they stand for do not know what the kingdom is all about and what we stand for that's the reason why people are tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine hallelujah we live in a time and a dispensation where anybody can cook up any doctrine in the name of jesus christ hallelujah and one of the things that the lord is helping us to do is to let us um permit us to be grounded steadfast in the integrity of god's truth and his word hallelujah so that when satan comes to sway us from the truth when he comes to make us look as if the word of god is a lie 
and that God is out to deceive us, the firmness and the quality of our foundation will keep us and will cause us to represent him. There are so many believers without structural foundations. Hallelujah. That's why I like the good old orthodox circles. When they get people born again, they have what they call discipleship programs. Now I know that a lot of what people call discipleship today is just religious indoctrination. Where they bring people and teach people about men and the doctrines and the dogma of men. Hallelujah. How be it is important that when believers come into the kingdom, they are well grounded. Hallelujah. The quality of any foundation determines not just the longevity but the quality of that building. Hallelujah. So very quickly we are going to be talking about firm foundation. The goal of this teaching tonight is to bring the body of Christ to a point where we understand the basis on which our faith, the basis on which our trust in God, the basis on which everything around our Christian life is hinged upon. For when we understand that, it will be impossible for Satan to sway us. There are so many believers that have given up in the midst, on the face of certain challenges. That's because our foundations are faulty. Many of us, our foundations are built on religion and not truth. Hallelujah. There are so many believers who have their foundations built upon the doctrines of men and the 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 understandings of men many of us our doctrines our, our foundations are built upon denominationalism and uh, uh, traditions of men and legalism and all of these things what is important for us to re-examine our foundations that we be grounded hallelujah now very quickly what is a foundation we are teaching please if you have something to write write i want to encourage you every time you come here we are coming here to learn god's word hallelujah so come with something to write it's very very important many of you just throw with pieces of papers in your pocket then you just bring it out and you see where you wrote your list for the market gas stove kerosene you just draw a straight line and then you are writing something that is supposed to change your destiny invest there's there's a preparation when you go for a lecture you go with your notebooks it tells you that you value what the lecturer is about to say and that you realize its importance to equip you for the times of exams hallelujah don't feel bad if you didn't bring anything there's love love covers everything in this place hallelujah so what's a foundation very quickly the dictionary defines a foundation as the lowest load bearing part of a building the load bearing part of a building typically below ground level so a foundation is not on the zinc foundation is below ground level the load bearing part of a building is called its foundation the load bearing part that part of the building that is responsible for taking all the weight another definition a body or ground on which other parts rest or are overlaid hallelujah that means when we pile books upon this substance this becomes the foundation the platform on which all other structures are laid and are lifted so that's very very important that means the foundation of your faith in Christ is the platform on which every other revelation every other understanding every other pursuit will rest upon that means when your foundation is faulty believe me no matter the quality of the building it is liable to crash hallelujah so many believers who do not understand the concept of foundation and the importance of understanding the things what did jesus teach hear me what did jesus teach when he came to the earth what was his message? What did he leave with us? What was his um, mandate towards the church? These are the things, the pillars on which our Christian race will be founded upon. For many people, 
their foundation for the Christian journey is just success and money. So many believers whose foundation is money. They were lured into the kingdom as a bait to become prosperous. Hallelujah. Now there's a place for wealth and prosperity. It's part of the packages and the blessings of redemption. But that is not a foundation. Are you listening to me? It's not a foundation. This light is beautiful. It's illuminating the place. It's very important. The microphone is beautiful. But these are not the foundations of this building. Are you listening to me? So that a, a doctrine or a teaching is not a foundational one does not mean it's not relevant. How be it when the, the Bible says if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Hallelujah. So it's important because there are many of us who have great revelations but they are resting without foundation. We know things about the realm of the spirit. We know things about angels. And then because many believers do not have correct foundations, we begin to dabble into elements of witchcraft, into metaphysics, Christian science, new age theology, in our bid to understand the reality of the person of Christ, we begin to explore this, in quote, mystery called God. And many people land themselves into metaphysics and Christian science and new age doctrines all in an attempt to understand God. Hallelujah. So it's important. But when you understand the basic foundation of who God is, Many of you who study physics and all of this, they teach what we call SI units. Hallelujah. And every other um, unit that will be derived is only a derivative of these things. Is that correct? And so we must understand the tenets on which the Christian faith is built upon. The benefits of having a firm foundation is number one. It gives you a rock solid Christian life gives you a solid Christian life that your Christian life is not based on religious doctrines of men my church your church my pastor your pastor this is what I was taught this is what I knew growing up no a firm foundation gives you a rock solid life number two is the antidote to wrong antichrist doctrines the antidote to religion it's the antidote to falsehood when you have a firm foundation you will have discernment enough to know that no matter how powerful a teaching how many of you okay well I, I don't want to ask that question but I know that there are a number of people who were involved in all kinds of yoga zodiac new age things and let me tell you if you're looking for in quote revelation go to the new age you will see revelations that will astonish you hallelujah Confucius came with his own Rema Buddha has his own all kinds of people have their own Rema and they look logical in quotes but when we have a firm foundation it becomes an antidote to error let me show you something the Bible has to say turn with me very quickly to 1st John chapter 4 there's a caution that is so important especially for our generation first john chapter 4 thank you jesus please if you have your bibles i appreciate if you turn there yeah. first john if you don't have just share with someone first john chapter 4 beloved believe not every spirit is it in your bible hallelujah but test the spirits whether they are of God because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Verse 2 By this know ye the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist of which ye have heard that it should come and even now already is in the world it's in america it's in nigeria it's in zaria it's in abuja 
Abuja is in Port Harcourt. It's everywhere. And several believers, they truly love God. But because their foundation is not firm, many people have left the doctrines that Jesus left with the church. Many people have left the message that Jesus gave the church. Many people have derailed from the expectation that Jesus has for the church. And we are doing all kinds of things. Preaching different kinds of gospels. Being motivated by different kinds of things. And tonight the Lord is going to be helping us to examine our foundation. Say Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you Heavenly Father. Now there are two things I will be doing very briefly. Number one is to we are going to be examining very briefly. I'm not here to create confusion and talk. But very briefly, we are going to be examining what has gone wrong with the church, especially with respect to several doctrines. There have been several doctrines and then we will, we will end by looking at what I call the Christian's statement of faith. How many of you have gone to a website and then you see statement of faith? A summary. How many of you are or were in the Anglican? Let me see your hands. Hallelujah. When I was in the seminary, we had something we called the Apostles' Creed. How many of you still remember? I believe in God, creator of heaven and earth, his only begotten son. Uh -huh. Some of you have forgotten. New creation has carried you. Hallelujah. And every single day, although we're doing it religiously, but little did we realize it was putting in us a summary of everything that Jesus is and that he represents the church. Very, very powerful. And tonight, we're going to be examining very quickly. Now, because of lack of firm foundation, We've had people use all kinds of bases to interpret different things in scripture. Hallelujah. People have misinterpreted several things in scripture. And as a result, has led to movements, has led to patterns, has led to doctrines and errors. And several believers are suffering. One of it is the issue of appearance. Hallelujah. As a result of this, there is a great controversy in the church. As regards the concept of appearance. Now that means everything dressing and all of that. A man should not wear what belongs to a woman. You know and this and that. Women should veil or not veil their hair. Wear trouser or not wear trouser. Makeup or not ma makeup. Jewelry or not jewelry. And although many believers want to press into God. This has become in many circles for instance. The basis for many things. Choosing leaders determining whether people are growing or not hallelujah and we cannot pretend that there is need for a voice to be raised and address this that's why the bible says the foundation of the church was built upon the apostles and the prophets and if the apostles and the prophets fail to bring the church to order then we have failed as a gift of the church hallelujah there are several people suffering in silence not even knowing even those who claim to be walking in quote in the now new creation cannot even defend why they are doing what they are doing for instance those who wear veils cannot tell you why they are wearing veils those who say okay i have rebelled now i'm not wearing veils. they cannot even tell you why they are not wearing veils those who wear trousers cannot tell you why they are wearing trousers those who don't wear cannot tell you why they are and there's all kinds of confusion in the body and the church is full of a bunch of arrogant and religious people who claim they understand many people who believe they are the Holy Spirit in the church and all kinds of people have written devilish books born out of new age and the doctrines of men and several ministries have used it as their patterns and they have discipled many people generations into error Bible says, nevertheless, the foundation of the Lord standeth sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let every man that name the name of Christ. So, God has his own foundation. 
there are many ministries that have built their foundations many doctrines many pastors many church leaders many apostles many prophets have their doctrine but the bible says there is something called the foundation of the lord nevertheless in spite of all kinds of foundations we have there are many believers for instance who have been made not to press into intimacy with the holy spirit every time you pray you sense the presence of god and every time you go and ask the elders they tell you you are demonic and these experiences have derailed us from koinonia intimacy with the holy spirit because the people cannot understand what is happening they call it wrong that's what happened to the scribes and the pharisees when jesus came they didn't understand the new move and the patterns that the holy spirit was. and several people have been misled and misguided there are many people who believe that the apex of their spiritual experience should be the apex of the church's spiritual experience so that when there is any spiritual experience that defies their own personal experience they term it as error and they write books to defend what they believe is their knowledge but there is no man who is a custodian of wisdom except christ himself all of us are students in the school of the spirit so instead of arguing and bringing stupid opinions and boldly writing books and making claims and misleading people i cannot tell you how it pains me when i watch people walking in error and religion there are many doctrines there are many religious circles that do not believe for instance in the ministry of the holy spirit there are many religious circles for instance that do not even believe in the trinity So the issue of appearance has been a big issue. Many of you have been, many of you, the way you are blessing God now, sitting on your seat, I said, God, thank you. Whatever devil stopped me from coming for Koinonia tonight. The ministry of the Holy Spirit is another issue that has been fought violently in the church. For others, they have embraced all of his ministry except that strange, controversial issue of tongues every other one is okay for others they have totally exited out there are many circles that have taught today that the era of miracles are over they believe it it's in their books they force you to to know it before they baptize you if you came tonight to hear the truth then you will hear it and hear me friends there are two categories of people in this place as i speak those who are open-hearted to say lord please walk on me it doesn't matter what i have believed if it is against your truth my heart is open and those who will shell themselves out of religion and begin to explain away the things and say all these kind of people have always known that these young people are very stupid now i have an opportunity to confirm it Eli who said there is a spirit that is in man and the inspiration of the almighty is what make it men of understanding hallelujah and then the concept of sin and holiness mm. we have certain people who believe that you walk your salvation with fear and trembling and they've gone out of context to what the bible says and teaching people to live under religion and bondage there are so many people trying to die for their sins when jesus has paid the price on the other hand we have other foundations who have taught people that because jesus has died for do anything sleep in the name of jesus drink in the name of jesus steal in the name of jesus lobby in the name of jesus there's grace for you both of them are faulty foundations there is a foundation called the foundation of the Lord. So we have many people drinking and smoking and come and climb the pulpit. There are many discipleship leaders who are the drunkards. There are many people who do all kinds of things. Ah. I hope this silence means you are receiving it. hallelujah 
grace and works another issue very controversial issue in the church others believe we are in the dispensation of work work it out everyone will only help those who help themselves now there are people who believe that God is our father and therefore cross your leg as a son and allow him to just ride you through destiny then we have the issue of salvation once saved always saved or once saved you can lose your salvation it's another controversial teaching so who is right and who is wrong i'm addressing an issue i'm sorry to say it and i say it with all humility that many people are afraid of addressing on pulpit because they are afraid of losing members afraid of you must be dead to yourself to take this kind of series At the end of this meeting now there are going to be different stories and opinions listen friends god didn't ask us to become philosophers he just asked us to become obedient to his word as the holy spirit leads us we have complicated the reality of god's will. let's look at a few others the doctrine of the rapture we have others who have taught that there's nothing called rapture no rapture no jesus and 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 truly um it's true that there's no word rapture in the bible as it were okay i've not i've not stood in any side sure i'm giving two sides so i'm still neutral so we have those who preach the doctrine of the rapture that there is an event that is called the rapture others are saying there is an event that is not called the rapture it's another thing then we talk about the pre-tribulation the mid-tribulation and the post-tribulation i'm showing you different kinds of foundations that we have in this blessed kingdom of our father others have taught that the church will be persecuted and then when we are persecuted and everything is over christ will come and take the church that's what we call post-tribulation others are saying will be persecuted for a period of three and a half years after that in the midst of it christ will come and rapture the church that's what they call mid tribulation and then others say we are not going to face it so who is right because every one of us belong to one or two of these circles and you have been asking questions and then others say there's nothing like rapture we're going to be on earth forever hallelujah it's encapsulated in a popular doctrine called the doctrine of immortality then the concept of the antichrist who really is the antichrist this antichrist thing, many of us cannot sleep we have been punished because of certain tapes you made a mistake of buying in bookstores and from that day till now your mind is not bad because you had a faulty thing about the antichrist i remember one of my aunties i shared the story very humorously i think in 1990 99 or 98 or something 99 minding my own business loving the lord this woman called me to our room and showed me one book latin book and they calculated everything and it showed that pope john paul the one that has died though that he is the antichrist based on certain roman numerals and it arrived to him hallelujah now she said look she's already rehearsing she stopped eating meat stop taking milk now listen what we're, we're, we're examining foundations tonight she stopped taking so several things and told me i said why she said she's preparing herself nobody knows tomorrow ah. and so she was incorporating into the fellowship out of love and sincerity it makes sense to me no meat no milk ah what else will you eat So who is the antichrist been several teachings you know why i'm saying this because many of us seated here were taught one or more of these things and how many of us truly desire to grow spiritually how many of us are ready to check our foundations and once and for all build upon something that is the truth 
that's what I told myself years ago I began to say Lord examine my foundations and I found out that my life was built upon faulty things the concept of prosperity and poverty another foundation there are many people that preach that prosperity is the way forward I mean if you are not prosperous forget it it's an insult to redemption there are others who have preached that if you are poor that's the way forward God likes it it's a nice life you live a quiet life you are not open to immorality you are not open to pride it's be very nice in a simple one bedroom you and your wife and then one or two children why having five children is even a prosperity you have two or three according to a moderate and a contract life there are several other doctrines should women preach in church should they be allowed to preach in church God has said, forget it. Every woman preaching in church is going to hellfire. Because the Bible says it. Now others have said it's true. This is so where what is the truth? Have you not? How many of us have been asking this question secretly? Confess now. How many of you you just don't want to say it so that it doesn't become you say it's not with my mouth, you hear it. However, these are our contemplations in the secret place, and somehow we know. That in the answers we will receive lie in the next dimension of our understanding and knowledge of Christ. Like I said tonight, my job is not to create controversy. This is a long teaching and um, I'm not here to begin to examine certain things. But there are three of this that I want to address. Three of it. Hallelujah. Many of you think I'm going to talk about appearance. I will not talk about appearance. So if you are... One, let me tell you, there are three things. Okay, let me just talk briefly about appearance. Three things. Living faith will never be deeper life. Christ's embassy will never be celestial church. Look up. Are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? So let me announce once and for all on behalf of my glorious king and his government. Ladies in the... No, we will never reach a point where all the ladies in the world will stop wearing trousers. And we will never get to a point in the world where all the ladies in the world will wear trousers. Hello. I hope you like what I'm saying. We will never get to a point where guys will stop wearing jeans. And we will never get to the point where everybody in the whole world will wear suits. Listen friends, the secret to the growth of the corporate body is to concentrate on our similarities not our differences hallelujah so should i say something at least about appearance all right very quickly we'll look at just one scripture i didn't want to touch it hey, Holy Spirit, you really want me to touch this I will touch it if you can give me the popular scripture that says, Let a woman not wear what belongs to a man. Who can give? Calm down. Deuteronomy, what? All right, let's go there and see what the word of God has to say. Deuteronomy, what? Oh Lord, I pray. That your word will come with power set men free many believers are saved many are filled with the holy ghost but very few are free we hail you most high the woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man this was moses giving the law of brotherhood as many translations put it the woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man are you there neither shall a man put on a woman's garment for all that do so are abomination unto the lord thy god mm. so that's the that's this that's the scripture that has brought all kinds of things and um, we've had several people
confused about all of this i did a little study shocking study so follow me we're going to examine just three words and then we'll be out of that place hallelujah the word pertaineth in the hebrew is the word keli k-e-l-i-y and this is what it means in the hebrew we're examining that scripture there are several believers that take scriptures out of context that's why as much as possible try to get a bible concordance takes concordance or at least by amplified many of us you have one torn bible that fire burned half of it that's why you took in your pocket and bring. how will you grow that way when they open to the scripture you start you don't see the first part of the verse you are looking for because fire has burnt it and then you cram only half of it then you use it to build doctrines now the word pertained in the hebrew this is what it means it means number one an article it means a vessel it means an implement or an utensil isn't that amazing that's what the word pertained means hallelujah very important now the word man that is used in deuteronomy 5 is not the word adam interesting i hope you know adam means man from the dust of the earth it's not the word adam is the word i don't know how to pronounce it i y s h you know what they call it that thing you put apostrophe right all right i y s h and this is what it means listen it means a soldier it means a warrior it means a man of war follow me are you listening to me it means a warrior a soldier a man of war men that go for war now you understand the context because at this point israel were always fighting hallelujah moses was giving something very very powerful and so if this were to be arranged and put properly this is what it would be in the hebrew the woman shall not put on the weapons or the armor of a warrior neither shall a warrior put on a woman's garment for all that do it is an abomination unto the Lord. Women were not permitted to go for war. I hope you know that in Jewish customs. Women were not allowed. Relax. Women were not allowed to go for war. Listen. Trust me. You are smiling. I'm soon coming back to the other side. I... Praise God. So Moses was admonishing the people, preparing them. It was an abomination according to the principles of the Jewish custom. That's why women didn't go for war. Scriptural proof. That's why Bathsheba was back at home. Hallelujah. When the people went for war. And David violated the principle because kings followed the people to go for war. And he didn't go for the war. And so while he was meandering around his veranda he saw the woman women were not that's why till today in certain nations of the world women it's just necessity that has made women to join military are you listening to me it was not part of the jewish customs that's why the worst kind of warfare is that you kill men women and children women and children were exempted is believed that when you capture the men and when you fight how many of you remember when gideon was going to fight the midianites hallelujah the women and the children were made to go back and then all the men the men of war were the ones who went and so on and so forth so that's what he's talking about he really wasn't talking about a man adam as it were he was saying it's an abomination to put on the robe of war that when the men become so irresponsible to a point that the women have to wear an armorage and go for war it is an abomination unto the Lord hallelujah and so these things were taken and then we began to use them to teach all kinds of things and 
now that's where the concept of trouser came in the concept of this and that came in and several people have insulted the western world have had on many pulpits many africans and nigerians ungratefully insulting the western world let me tell you what our official dressing were rags animal skin so if we are going back that's where we are going our official dressing was not scared it was animal skin let me tell you the official jewish clothes were even scared jesus of nazareth your jesus of nazareth that you watch what was jesus wearing uh, hold on calm down listen as you are i told you i'm coming back because there are many of you that you're agreeing to what i'm saying it's not a an openness for truth it's just a way of endorsing your heart of rebellion we'll still check it So many people have been misled and i know many books that have been written and many people have been said if you wear trousers you are going to hellfire others have been said if you wear skirts you are going to hellfire you are going to this you are going to that and sincerely look at me i'm not i'm not um if you know me i'm not a whether trouser or no trouser person that's that's really not me. the issue that the bible puts the central message is two christian character backed up by modesty and decency what the church should be addressing is modesty because in jewish days prostitutes didn't wear trousers they didn't even wear mini skirts but what they wore was transparent and there are many people who are like that they say say you say don't wear trousers okay i will not wear trousers but what they are wearing can kill so have we solved the problem are you listening to me we have not solved the problem of of there are so many people who camouflage in religiosity but their hearts are terribly far away from god and there are many people i know a a a a, 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 a woman who um for years had a big challenge with these things and they truly believe there are many people today who believe that demons attack them because they make they, they did make I know that we have read all kinds of occultic books that they use human hair level six 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 level seven 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 level twelve 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 and they have used uh, um, um, uh, uh, human blood to make this and all of that and many of you even cream you don't use because you say in the name of jesus blah 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 story 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 this and that and that why are we religious i have a question tonight why do we allow religion to stop us from walking in the fullness of what god has call us you are, whether you are wearing trousers or no trousers if you come and you are indecent it's our job to send you away and say go and dress well hallelujah the true christian character should be that of modesty and decency that whatever the bible says that let your eating meat not cause your brother to sin if i'm going to deeper life today i'll be stupid to dress like this and go to deeper life because for instance the, based on the, the doctrines and the tenets they already believe why don't you quietly confirm for the sake of the gospel are you listening to me it's called spiritual maturity if i'm going to talk among a company of elderly people 50s and above why should i, I there's there's nothing wrong it's not the issue of good or bad it's about being in the best position to communicate the life of christ are you getting blessed tonight and so dissolve that grouping thing we are the committee of ladies that wear trousers we are the committee of ladies who don't wear trousers we are the holy ones we are the not sanctified ones and begin to address the issue of decency or indecency you have clothes that are not decent pack them and take them away like a true ambassador one who represents the government of heaven but for you to preach and say wearing trousers or no wearing trousers is going to be the solution is a vain pursuit there are six billion people on earth with different kinds of mindset and can i tell you something we are all going to heaven so i wonder how we'll behave in heaven when we're already hating one another because of this many people if they have their way they will tell jesus christ create another supper there is one big table 
and all of us are going to sit down on that table. It's called the supper of the Lamb. So you better begin to love your brother right now because you may sit close to him at that supper. Why do we hate one another? Am I addressing something, please? There are several people, there are several of you sitting down today that you have been stopped. Um, they've stopped you from relating with other people on grounds of certain things. God, God brought roommates and friends that can change and transform your destiny. But because of faulty foundations, there are many people, you know, you hear a tape and a message that can bless you. But simply because you have a problem with a few things in that man's church or whatever but you know this person loved god just personal things you don't receive it there are many of you that you are suffering from sin you are suffering from all kinds of habits and the holy spirit just points you to a message that was preached by wf kumui i say kumui forget i'm a new creation man i made this and forget about whatever excesses whether they wear earrings or this can you not open your heart and say lord speak to me I desire change more than anything. When we get that hungry, then we start forgetting. There are several people going to church is simply exploring to know those who are obedient to the word or not obedient by the standards of their foundation. So the moment we come to church, you're already frowning at everybody. The person sitting next to you put perfume and you're like, oh God, this can't be. Let me tell you something. Heaven is not for only you. Heaven is for all of God's children. And you are only one. Hallelujah. Are you getting blessed tonight? Is this setting somebody free tonight? Nevertheless, the foundation of the Lord stands. So let me leave that so that I can quickly go into something else. I hope that at another platform we'll discuss it. The issue of the doctrine of eternal salvation. I'm just touching the ones that matter. Two or three. The doctrine of eternal salvation. Once saved, always saved. True or false. See, everybody's afraid now. Say, ah, I better mind my business. So, what does the word of God have to say about the concept of salvation? Because we have two groups of people those who come father i mean jesus christ i i give you my life i give you my all take my all and all of that and then we walk contrite we love god and all of these things and then there are others who teach that the moment your name is written in the book of life that's all in fact there are people that argue and say there's nothing called the book of life there's nobody's name written in the book of life how old are we that we are arguing with the word. How old are you on this earth? Hallelujah. And so let me teach you what the word of God has to say. Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. Look up. It is possible to lose your salvation. Say it after me. It is possible to lose your salvation. Hear me. Don't let anybody preach any. Let me show you something the Bible says. Help us, Holy Spirit. Galatians chapter 1 verse 19. Paul was admonishing the church. We reconcile after the meeting. But this is very important. And you need to listen to it. Many of you have finished exams. So sit down and let's have your attention and let God bless you. Galatians chapter 1 verse 9. I like all of us to read it. Verse 9. One to read. If any man preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have received, let him be accursed. Any of you say, ah, my prophet received it from the spirit. Turn with me. 2 Corinthians 11 verse 4. Scripture to address your man of God. Now please, I'm bringing this out in love. Are you listening to me? We are not trying to condemn people or say this and no, 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 no. We are not. I used to believe a lot of these things until I opened up my heart for God to help me too. So, 2 Corinthians 11 verse 4. I like the word of God to speak for itself. That's why I'm saying open it. Are you ready? Verse 4. One to read. Pre 
preaching another Jesus whom we have not preached or if ye receive another spirit which we have not received or another gospel which ye have not accepted ye might well bear with him now look up the word bear with him doesn't mean to believe him because that's what a lot of people have been misleading and so somebody comes on your pulpit and is misleading your members and I say the Bible says just bear with him and it's confusing the people say just wait a little while and it's confusing he says say it once saved always saved there are people who believe that because it was your spirit that was saved as a believer when you go and fornicate it's really your body that fornicates your spirit is still sanctified and so you are going to ah, it's what the Yoruba people call the wrong that's a lie it doesn't make sense so we have several believers who are living in all kinds and I tell you the truth including ministers I say it without any fear or favor men and women who have not kept the righteous precepts of God doing all kinds of things in the name of Jesus and we justify all the things we are doing but if we are that generation that will usher in the king then there is need to check our foundation because right now i was i was um chatting with alex many of you know alex jerry and he was telling me the perversion that happens in america in america right now there's a show they do where the pastors are allowed to dance with some of the beautiful members i mean if you are not beautiful just count yourself out of that list they call it something yeah dance with the dance with the pastor so you come just boogie with the pastor and then when you dance is is meant to foster social cultural unity culturally correct scripturally incorrect nevertheless the foundation of the lord standing sure. i believe in prosperity i believe in divine health i also believe in holiness because see there are many believers who have got it all wrong when you just like you say what what does this church or ministry really say ah, you, can, you can do anything what do you tell us flex enjoy ah this is the wrong place here we, we iron people out not out of religion are you listening to me not out of religion but at the same time we have a responsibility under god to bring ourselves to a point where we are relevant in this society otherwise let me tell you something if we don't sharpen ourselves like this our generation will miss it in America right now, there's, there's all kinds of perversion. Marriage in America right now is the union of two adults. Anything. Well adult and a woman adult. Fine. But the Bible says, Therefore shall a man, Adam, a man, leave his father and mother and not cleave to another man. Cleave to not fish, not uh, whale not not vulture not bed not your nice sweet german shepherd cleave to his wife and they two only they two are permitted to be one flesh a man and a woman cannot be one flesh you can be business partners yes you can be co-ministers co-laborers in the vineyard yes but not one flesh in terms of unity hallelujah and so it's interesting that your relationship be with the opposite sex if you are serious about marriage say amen if you are considering marriage make sure the person you are considering is not the same as you otherwise something is wrong who, who in the world would have believed that the church would need to address this hello him madonna Hello, Him, Madonna. Hello, Him. Hello, Him, Madonna. Hello, Him, Madonna. Hello, Him. Hello, Him, Madonna. Hello, Him. Hello, Him, Madonna.
I said it's possible to lose your salvation. But hear me. I've done something here. Forgive me. Hallelujah. While it is true that it's possible to lose your salvation, what many religious people put as the condition is wrong. That's the balance. We have established the fact that it's possible to lose your salvation. I beg you friends, don't let anybody deceive you. Not in the name of any teaching. By the grace of God, we are committed to teaching you the uncompromising word of truth. And everything you hear us teach in this place are things that we have taken out time to seek the face of God and seek knowledge from other members of the body. Hallelujah. It is possible to lose your salvation. But what is the condition? So right. Because a lot of people have put religiosity. And so, when a believer, for instance, falls into the sin of fornication or falls into um, a robbery or something, a lot of people look at him and say, you have missed out. There are many churches that call the person officially and say, like Paul, let's hand this over to the devil. Look at me, please. Look at me. Once and for all, let me clear this. Paul did not die for your sins. Everybody, please look at me. Paul is not Alpha and Omega. There are many places that Paul himself confessed his inadequacies. Jesus Christ is perfect theology. The Bible says, looking up to Jesus. The, he is the one who is the author. Are you listening to me? So, Jesus Christ is the perfection of all that we should be. We call him perfect theology. There are many of us, there are many people who followed all kinds of people followed God's generals, followed all of this. I'm not saying there's, there's a place for mentorship and receiving from people and all of that and trusting the teachings you get. Are you listening to me? But I'm saying not above Christ himself. Paul himself needed to give his life to Christ. Any other person that wants to lead you to the Father outside of Jesus Christ will only mislead you. I repeat, any other person who wants to lead you to Christ, aside from Jesus himself, will mislead you. So what are the conditions? Two conditions. Number one. Two conditions to lose your salvation. Rebellion. Number two. Idolatry. These are the two biblical conditions. I'm sorry I don't have time. I have to rush. These are the two biblical conditions that can cause a man to lose his salvation. Let me tell you what rebellion is. Look up. Rebellion is a willful, perpetual, and continuous um, violation of God's laws and principles. A willful, perpetual, continuous violation of God's principles in spite of the convictions of the Holy Spirit. Are you listening to me? Rebellion is not that I have a habit I'm struggling with and God is helping me. You know, it's, it's something I feel for instance. Let's assume in, let's assume cameraman, let's assume. Hallelujah. Let's assume I have a problem sleeping around for instance. Alright? Then I'm sleeping around and doing every kind of thing. And I'm still a preacher. Are you listening to me? And every time I'm convicted in my spirit. And it's an issue. It's, it's an issue. I cry about it. That's not rebellion. Are you listening to me? That's a wrong habit. That needs the power of God. That's why we take our time to fix miracle services. Where people come and the strongholds are broken. That's why we keep feeding you with God's word. But rebellion is when it becomes a a state of iniquity in my heart such that I'm not even repentant about it again. For instance, like I've planned that after preaching, for instance, for instance, that after preaching like this, then uh, today is Friday, I'll go and cool off somewhere. After, after, after all the, I mean, all the stress of shouting and the rest, I go and have a nice weekend with a lady. I mean, I'm preaching. But it's, it's in my heart. I have planned it. I have purposed it. I know I'll do it in two weeks time. I know I'll do it again. Another thing. Um, stealing. All of these things. 
these are acts of iniquity and rebellion you steal your roommates um, money and then when you steal the money you laugh about it and you are waiting for another opportunity to do it there's no the difference between rebellion and just having a challenge that god is helping you is that there is still the conviction of the holy spirit and that you are yielding to that conviction are you listening to me so that satan doesn't tell you look you are always doing this you are going to hellfire while you know that in your heart is a challenge you are struggling Paul himself had a struggle and is in heaven today. He said, the things that I want to do, I do not find myself doing them. But the things that I don't want to do, I find myself doing them. He said, oh wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? It is for such that in Christ there is no condemnation. But when a man comes to a state of iniquity, iniquity, where it becomes an issue, let's assume that, for instance, I consult, let's assume all the power and the manifestation that are happening in this place there's some babalao agreement that is done somewhere i'll not be surprised if there are people who believe that that's what we use in this place the guy and a young man we have in how can young people be having word of knowledge prophecies man there's something <laughs> oh yes it's true that there's something but it's the power of the lord jesus christ that's why we give him all the glory Hallelujah. Praise God. Very quickly. Let's go. So rebellion. And then number two, idolatry. Idolatry. Hear me, friends. Idolatry will take any man to hell. Idolatry is putting in the position of Jesus Christ. Anything, an idol, an object that is not him. There are many families who are half Christians, half traditional idolaters. When the situation gets bad, they run to one small, uh, one small goddess with mirror and broom, just lying somewhere in a secret room that only some of our fathers enter. Many ministers in this country who consult these idols and come out in the power of the idols and begin to minister with power and in quote signs and wonders nevertheless the foundation of the Lord standeth sure having this seal the Lord knoweth them that are his and let every man that named the name of Christ depart from iniquity hallelujah I'll stop here for now on those issues the last thing I'll do before we pray is I want to read out to you from the word of God what every believer should have called your Christian statement of faith, your creed. A summary of what Jesus Christ left with the church. Are you listening to me? I don't care what church you belong, hear me. And by the way, let me say this. I, I hope you know that of course this is the body of Christ but this is not a church an assembly as it were this is an apostolic meeting where God is changing people that's why we don't care what church you are coming from you are always welcome hallelujah Catholic Anglican Celestial um, Guru Maharaji um, anyone you are welcome we welcome you in the name of Jesus so long as you are open to hear the truth and what I'm about to tell you now is not the doctrine of any church or any ministry. It's the truth of God's word. The foundation of God is built upon this. Are you ready to listen? Number one. The Bible is the inspired word of God. No matter what church, what doctrine, what denomination, what sect, if you truly name the name of Christ, then let's begin to straighten out some things. I've, I've spoken about a few faulty foundations. There's no need going into them. Um, my job is not to show the things that are wrong, but to put in structure the things that are right. So the Bible is the inspired word of God. A revelation from God to mankind. 
and hear me the bible has supreme authority over all matters of faith and conduct if you are a christian that is in the family of god then this is one tenant you must put i'm telling you the teachings the foundations of the lord the bible has the supreme authority that means the end of all arguments is the bible the word of god the bible stands supreme to the doctrine of any man denomination generation including joshua selma the bible is superior to eni superior to koinonia superior to your church superior to your pastor superior to me superior to every apostle every prophet superior to god's generals superior to paul philip nathaniel i don't care superior to anybody the bible the infallible irrefutable word of god these are the foundations Second Timothy, if you want a scripture on that, Second Timothy 3, verse 15 to 16, and then First Peter chapter 2, verse 2, very quickly, so that we can pray briefly. We're out of time. Number two, that there is one true God. There is one true God who has revealed himself in three persons. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Look up. Say after me. The Father. Say it. The Father. The Son. And the third one is not you. The third one is the Holy Spirit. Say after me. The Father. The Son. And the Holy Spirit. Coexisting in unity. It's a mystery we do not fully understand. But we are sure of. That's why it's called faith. Are you listening to me? so I've had all kinds of teachings trying to explain the Trinity there is only so much that the Word of God has to tell us about this and we believe faith is that you believe even when you do not see and we know I know it's true I know it's true hallelujah there are a few places in the scripture that reveal that the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit is there for instance in the encounter of Philip when he was about being stoned the Bible says Philip was full of the Holy Spirit so the Holy Spirit was living in him. Hallelujah. And the Bible says he looked up to heaven and saw the Father seated and Jesus standing at his right hand. So we see the Trinity there. Hallelujah. And then in the baptism of Jesus, we see that Jesus, the Son, the Word, who had become flesh, was standing and the Holy Spirit coming and a voice speaking from heaven. Hallelujah. And so there's no point doubting the existence of the Trinity. Number three. Salvation. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Look up. Christ is the only begotten. Okay, no, no, no. Listen, look up. Christ is now not the only begotten son. Christ was the only begotten son when he walked upon the earth. Right now, he's the firstborn among we, the brethren. So correct that in your statement of faith. Christ is not the only begotten son of the Father. Otherwise, you would say God has lied in the world. Behold, what manner of love the Father had bestowed upon us that we should be called. As many as received him, he gave them power to be called. So we are joint heirs with him. Partakers of his divine nature. Hallelujah. God incarnate called Jesus Christ. He was conceived of the Holy Spirit. Listen. The foundation on which the Christian faith is built. Born of the Virgin Mary. Born of the Virgin Mary. It's important to know that the word of God. Da Vinci code notwithstanding. Cast all those nonsense out of your house. Fully God. And he was fully man. Jesus perfectly revealed and did the will of the father. Taking upon himself the demands and the necessities of human nature and identifying himself completely with mankind but without sin. It's important to believe that Jesus died. It's important to believe that he died on a cross 
a train didn't kill him he died on a cross that's what the bible says you were re-examining our foundations he died on the cross he was buried in a tomb a virgin tomb belonging to joseph of arimathea hallelujah and on the third day he rose again he rose again you must believe that jesus christ rose again there are many believers that have not really taken our time to find out whether they believe or not you must believe and that jesus christ is today seated at the right hand of the father the right hand of authority according to scriptures making intercession for the saints and the bible says that we are seated with him it's very very important the holy spirit is the spirit of god he enables us to understand the truth he draws sinners to god and convicts them of sin righteousness and judgment he calls them to jesus christ he effects the new birth and the holy spirit dwells in all born again believers if you're truly born again in christ whether you feel it or not the holy spirit lives in you he bestows the spiritual gifts by which the persons can serve god he's the one who cultivates true christian character he comforts believers his presence in the life of the christian serves to bring the believer into the fullness of the statue of christ the holy spirit assures us of salvation he enlightens our minds and empowers the believer in worship in evangelism in service hallelujah it's important i'm reading some of these things so that our, our hearts be founded properly that it is by grace that men are saved through faith it is not of works that's what the bible says the grace of god brings salvation through the preaching of the repentance of the word of god and faith toward the lord jesus christ hear me it is only faith in the lord jesus christ that brings people to salvation one more time i repeat it is only through faith in the name of the lord jesus christ and his finished work that men are saved hallelujah there are two doctrines that jesus christ left with the church the doctrine of the water baptism and the doctrine of the communion both are supposed to be doctrines that reinforce and bring us into the understanding of our unity identifying with him in death and being alive the ordinance of baptism by a burial with christ should be observed now it's important it's a doctrine that christ left with the church the doctrine of water baptism so it's a healthy one it's encouraged but it's not the condition to go to heaven there is nowhere in scripture that says your going to salvation is tied to whether you are baptized in water or not however it is important we observe it because it's a doctrine and an ordinance that jesus left with the church and so part of our compliance as being obedient citizens of the of, of the kingdom is to observe it however we have records of people like the man on the cross who were not baptized but jesus said this day you will be with me hallelujah and we have records of many babies who died and are in heaven thank you jesus it's a symbolism of our identification with jesus in death and that we are alive with him today the lord's supper consists of bread and any fruit of the vine it's a symbol of expression our sharing of our divine nature with christ a memorial of his suffering and death and we are encouraged to observe this until he comes the baptism of believers is the unique work of the holy ghost and evidence of which is the speaking of other tongues oh brothers and sisters believe this please believe this has nothing to do with pentecostalism as the holy spirit gives them utterance the scriptures teach a life of holiness without which no man will see the lord by the power of the holy ghost 
we are able to obey that command that we should be holy for his holy entire sanctification is the will of god for all believers and should be earnestly pursued by walking in obedience to god's word not the religious practice that people are doing another foundational truth the church is the body of christ look at me not your church the church are you hearing me your church is only they are only members of that universal body because there are many ministries that behave as if they are the only ones who represent the church we are not given that kind of devilish ministry the church is the word ecclesia is the word that is translated in english catholic the universal church the bride of christ one man is not sufficient to be the bride of christ the church in our fullness and our unity we represent the bride of christ hallelujah the church is the body of christ the habitation of god through the spirit with divine appointments for the fulfillment of the great commission and hear me every believer born of the spirit is an integral part of the church of the firstborn which are written in heaven sorry there's no time to give you all of the scriptures any divinely ordained ministry look at me any ministry apostolic prophetic any assembly any church any denomination hear me is provided for a twofold purpose number one world evangelization and number two the equipping and the edification of the body so any ministry i don't care what the name of the ministry is that is not committed to the ministry of soul winning and the building and the edification of the body with whatever kind of revelation prosperity divine health miracles holiness faith any ministry that claims to be called of god and is not directly involved in soul winning and the building and edification of the church needs to go back and check their foundation we're rounding up that deliverance from sickness is provided for in the atonement and is the privilege of all believers we have made it look as if this is a pentecostal reality is part of the realities of the death of christ by whose stripes ye were healed healing and deliverance is part of the blessings of redemption isaiah 53 verse 4 and 5 ephesians chapter 4 verse 11 to 13. then the resurrection hear me there is something called rapture ha. and there is something called the resurrection of the dead are you listening to me i don't care what message you have been preached let no man deceive you there is something called the resurrection of the dead and a day will come when believers will exit this earth a day will come and guess what is coming very very soon whether you believe it or not will not stop it everybody in hellfire today is a believer the only issue is that they believe too late so whether you want to believe it or not there is a place called heaven a real place called heaven there is another place called hell both of them are real places there is yet another place called the lake of fire and hear me in hell today there are people who left this morning relocated from this morning they woke up with you but right now and guess what they can hear what we are preaching oh yes it is given unto them because the rich man in hell said oh let send lazarus to go and preach to my brothers so that they will not come here and he said they have moses and the prophet moses represents the law because that was the dispensation of the law they have the law and the prophets if they will not listen even if he comes they will not listen but god has granted our generation there are several people that have come back from the dead have gone to heaven and have gone to hell 
shouting that there is a place called heaven and earth. And many of us have allowed our westernization to cheat us. There is a real place. Say after me, there is a place called heaven. And there is a place called hell. Thank you, Jesus. The resurrection of those who have fallen asleep in Christ and their translation, together with those who are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord, is imminent and is the blessed hope of the church. The devil and his angels, the beast and the false prophets, and whoever is not found in the book of life shall be consigned to everlasting punishment in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone. This is what the Bible calls the second death. Revelations 19 verse 20, Revelations 20 verse 10 to 15. Soon we are going to take a series on the end times. In theology we call it eschatology. There is a promise of a new heaven and a new earth when all of this church age is wrapped. Second Peter three thirteen and Revelations twenty one verse one. There are many more, but this, brothers and sisters, for time's sake, encapsulates the foundation of the Lord, the basis on which every believer's faith must be built upon. Whether you wear trousers or you don't wear trousers, whether your hair is veiled or not veiled, whether you speak in tongues or you don't speak in tongues, whether you believe in miracles or you don't believe in miracles, if you don't believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that He died and resurrected, you are not a member of God's family. And guess what? There is only one place, hellfire. Emmanuel, all the world is calling on me. Emmanuel, when you come again. Emmanuel, and the church will see your holy face. Emmanuel. I'll sing it one more time, then we'll pray. Emmanuel, all the world is calling your name. Emmanuel, when you come again. Emmanuel, and the church will see your holy face. Emmanuel. prosperity believe in holiness believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ believe in the grace of God and in his mercy believe in his power to keep you believe in the ministry of the Holy Spirit believe in praying in tongues believe in the edification of the spirit believe in the salvation of souls believe in faith let your foundation be strong believe that it takes more than prophetic accuracy for you to know that a man is truly of God believe that the gifts of the spirit is not necessarily equal to spiritual maturity believe that you are a partaker of his divine nature believe that there is no condemnation for you that no man can the Holy Spirit convicts men but he does not condemn Romans chapter 8 verse 1 there is therefore now no condemnation maybe there was yesterday but there is therefore now and the Bible says the church is built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets bringing the church into an understanding of faith so that we are not tossed here and there by every wind of doctrine Believe that the word of God is above every prophetic revelation. It's above every spiritual encounter.
that even if you have a dream and you claim you saw Jesus Christ if what he told you and how he led you is not consistent with the word what you saw was not Jesus Christ believe in the immutable counsel of God's will hate poverty believe in prosperity as the package and the blessings of God run away from the religiosity of the Lord try to be right by your own strength try to be holy by your strength none of these things will help there are many people who have been struggling because they are trying to live by their strength the Bible says for by the arm of flesh shall no man Jude 24 says that um, it says that God is able to keep you unto him that is able to keep you from falling it's God that keeps men from falling there are many of you who are angry right now because somebody walked up to you and said I saw in the spirit that in one week you will die don't you know that the word of God is a more sure word of prophecy the person may not be lying but I need you to know that he's telling you so that you will pray not to lie down and say let it happen you must believe that you have the power like that's why I used to say that in everyone is a prophetic dimension you don't need to be a prophet to speak the word of God take the word of God and put in your mouth the word of God doesn't just reveal the future it creates one these are the foundations we are examining the foundation of the Lord and our faith must be built upon this foundation you must believe that life and death hear me are not coincidences of nature you must believe that it is given unto you to choose life or death he said I set before you are you getting blessed with life? I set before you blessing and cursing I set before you life and death he said choose life that you may live so you can choose life I need you to know that divine health is a possibility in Christ it's the heritage of the new believer it doesn't matter how you have been buffeted by sickness don't give up there is a realm called divine health I like you to know that a life of unending prosperity is your heritage in Christ no matter what denomination no matter what doctrine you have had God wants you to be prosperous there is nothing that glorifies God in your poverty God wants you to be great hear me God does not want you to be weak and beggarly He wants you to be at the higher echelons of life so that by the influence that He gives you you can rule and reign hear me you have authority over Satan you are not negotiating it are you listening to me I don't care what book you have read that has told you that there are demons with horns and tails whether they are in level 19, 19, 19 those books may not be wrong but the Bible says I give you power to tread upon snakes and scorpions and over all not so the powers of the enemy is there nothing shall by any means hurt you so you are powerful every one of you hands must not be laid on you the word of God has said so about you you must believe that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. That you don't need to run around any guy or any lady to prove your relevance. You have been declared to be wonderfully and fearfully made. That you don't need to give yourself to before you get people to marry you or do all kinds of things. You don't have to compromise on the values of God. You must believe that because the Holy Ghost lives in you, you are anointed. It's not just the exclusive reserve of the ministers. You are anointed. Why are you anointed? Because you are one with the anointed one. Psalm 133, how behold how good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity. It says it's like the oil that flows from the head of Aaron the priest and flows to his bed and his skirts. And we are members of that priesthood. And so as the oil flows from the head, we Christ, he rose up to every member of the body. That's your foundation of being anointed. Nevertheless, the foundation of the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the foundation of the Lord. This is the foundation of the Lord. You must believe that.
that you have the ability to hear the Spirit of God and to be led by Him. He said, my sheep hear my voice. You must believe in the ability of the Holy Spirit. You begin to become led of the Holy Spirit. The moment you think, you believe. The moment you believe you are led, you are led. No matter how confused your life looks, you are led. And you will lead you to the place of destiny. If you are a Ketra, realize that you are in ministry. If you are a student, realize that you are in ministry. If you are a husband, a wife, a preacher, we are all in ministry. What is the ministry? To do and to finish our job description. You must believe that the day will come, there will no longer be the issue of Satan, sickness, Poverty. Together we will rule and reign with you. This is what the Bible calls the foundation of the Lord. Right on your feet.
church or denomination falls, we rejoice. What a shame to the church. And tonight, we are praying and saying, Lord, let the walkings of the Lord come out to me. That the joy of a member of the body will be the joy of everybody. That the fall of a member will bring everybody to live together. When the love of God is at work in our life, when we tear down all of this wall, we will see the greatest revival. Go ahead and pray for yourself. Jesus Christ, I pray. 